is for everybody here to look at the, where, did, where is the camera that we're looking to, uh, to wave hi to the people that are watching from home. I'm, my, I, I am pressing the button. Oh, over here. Press the button. I mean, no, no, wait. Hi. And that's to some of our newer members that were just elected that are watching us on television. We're waiting for Sal. We're waiting for Sal to come back. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, good. Nobody's in a big rush. Nobody's in a big rush. This is going to have to be good. of personal complaints or defamatory comments about the Board of Education personnel and students, nor against any person connected with the Danbury Public Schools. Let have signed up. Haley, um, I can't pronounce your last name. We do. They're speaking their home. Okay. Oh, so you're not doing it one at a time? You're going to do. All right. We're just taking turns. I'm sorry? It's all about the same topic. It's it's just, oh, all right. That's good. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to push down, so. Oh. Okay. Introduce yourself and go. Okay, um, I'm Haley Fosmentier, and this is Sabrina Michael Duncan and Cindy Pena, and um, we're from the Danbury High School Social Psychology class, um, and we're also here with Ms. Dioria. Okay. To the board members of Danbury High School uh, District, we are here from Danbury High School in pursuit of the truth by advocating for the change of the nationally celebrated holiday of to indigenous people, Lindy Roosevelt, in response However, the, fa the foundations of, on which this holiday was founded was false, and by celebrating Columbus Day as it is, schools are teaching children to reward a man with the legacy of untrue and fabricated accomplishment. We are celebrating a man whose legacy is based upon lies. A man who 500 years before even being born was beaten to North America king by the name of Leif Erikson. A man who, upon arriving to his destination, settled in the Caribbean islands, not North America. A man who could not have discovered that the earth was round, when in the 6th century BC philosophers like Aristotle and Pythagoras had already written that the earth was round. A man who, by his actions that led to genocide, human trafficking, as American citizens have been fighting against since the beginning of the civil rights. Not built on top of lies. We need to take ownership of the past that is our rightful history. This is our world. Not us, someone else will. So it has been changed to in cities such as Portland, Oregon, Albuquerque, New Mexico, St. Paul, Minnesota, Olympia, Washington, and Bridgeport, Connecticut. The Federal School Board of District, the City School Board in Bridgeport, voted, unanimously voted Tuesday night to do away with the federal holiday in favor of Indigenous Peoples Day, and the board member Kate Rivera proposed a move asserting students should be taught the true history, not the falsehood that Columbus was a hero. If they can make the change, so can we. Thank you very much.
following this quote um, the students that we don't comment on fellow participation. We just listen. Oh, thank you. That can, is there anyone else in the I'm sorry, is there anyone else in the room that would like to speak? No? Seeing none, we're going to move forward. All right, um, have you the consent calendar? A motion that the Board of Education approves the items on the consent calendar exhibits 15 170 through 15 171 as recommended. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ferguson. Any questions? Discussions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes, thank you. We'll now go and move into our student representatives. Oh, no, we're not. I'm sorry. Good everything. <laughs> I'm jumping right over my big project. Um, our employee representatives are here. We have the Academy of International Studies. We have teachers or someone from the Academy here to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, seeing none, I know we have people from Danbury High School because I know their faces. They're here, and the representation from Danbury that's speaking is somebody else. Please come and introduce yourself, sir. The mic should be on. With apprehension, does it sound right? Yes. yes it does. <laughs> Try not to just stick your way too much. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Joe Bass. I am a social studies teacher at Danbury High School, and I am also the um, building chair for NEA Danbury and Danbury High School. And uh, I certainly have a few things to bring up tonight. And first, I thank everyone uh, for the Alberts for actually bringing us here. That we are all very eager. Open these channels of Um, Well, and we have his herald for another. As you can see, it starts with DHS will forever be a principal for time and resonates with students. Uh, what's going to happen that this was the last year that Mr. Bocacci was serving us at the high school? will be our next principal next year. And that uh, certainly met with a positive response. And really carry it. It's announcement in the morning about taking buses against England. It's bringing them home. Into advisory classrooms. People would smile and wish them well, maybe a season's greeting. It felt safe. After Mr. Bacardi appreciated his leadership there. We know Gary loves the school and loves his students. He has always put us first tears in my eyes because I was able to see the growth and the transformation um, <clears throat> I guess one student for the best you really have to appreciate the kind of dedication to students and faculty that Mr. Boccaccio brought. Uh, certainly, faculty and teachers may not always have agreed with Mr. Boccaccio on what he said, but we always knew we got a fair shake with him, that he would always listen to the school at heart. And he had in every sense of the word. And now, Mr. Donovan will take over next year. Another headline. Good choice to fill the.
He understands. He knows. He's been there. He works with our students and our teachers every day, every minute of every day. And he will need all that experience and all that determination as he goes forward because, I mean, we can be honest, there are issues that he will have to deal with at the high school. <clears throat> in, in particular, there are three, I think, that my colleagues would agree with me on that I would like to bring up here tonight. Uh, the first one, I think, is that we need to be thinking about some sort of a restoration of a balance. And when I say restoration of a balance, a balance of what? Students are people. We do in our curriculum, in our offerings of the students, test scores, test scores, test scores, than just test scores. And I think it's about and move basis. Especially with our students, is and care. And they are our immigrant ELL students, they can be students at risk, they can be students in our special ed programs. We at the district leadership have done and move them forward on their way. But more still needs to be done. I think it's a testimony to the strength of our teaching staff and, and the dedication of our teachers that we try to, in many ways, shield our students from the testing mania, to understand what they need first, that there are priorities here, and that when our students' needs are well met and well served, the rest will fall into place. The test scores will go up by themselves if we are doing right by our students. Um, I, I heard this little phrase that we all like to say, you know, Danbury High School speaks in 43 different languages or 46 different languages or, or whatever the number might be. And though, yes, we do speak in 43 languages, I think it might be time for us to also ask how many languages do we actually tell us things and we need to be aware of these things. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The third big challenge really comes from the evaluation system. And the teacher evaluation system, with all the extra task saturation, fatigue, and maybe even burnout, close to burnout in some cases, has really taken a sledgehammer to staff morale, uh, perhaps not only at the high school, but around the district. We are very lucky, and we NEA Danbury certainly thanks uh, Dr. Pascarella, Dr. Glass, and all the other high-level members of, of their team because they have been very willing and open to discussing with us all the issues and things that have surfaced with this particular plan and are committed to working with us so that we together can continue to build the trust and the dialogue and the conversation. It's, it's a growth plan. It is the improvement of our teaching practice. And we certainly look forward to continuing to work on that and to build that so that we ultimately give the best possible education to our students. If we have good teachers, which we do, under the leadership of good administration, then what can only result is excellent education for our excellent, excellent students. And the teachers at the high school certainly look forward to working under the leadership of Dan Donovan next year, to finish out under Gary Boccaccio this year, to continue to build those relationships, to improve our teaching, and to improve education for all our students. And perhaps one day, if we are still using print, though by the way, this says stop the press, we're going digital, uh, but maybe one day, the headline will read, Donovan says DHS will be forever in his heart. And Mr. Donovan, will be the shoes, his shoes will be those that somebody else will need to fill. And maybe like one of the students here said, once you're a hatter, you're always a hatter. We're proud of our school, we look forward to great things, we thank you, and 
If I may also close today as a history teacher, tomorrow is Veterans Day. Please, thank a veteran. And if there's anybody in here who has served, on behalf of all the teachers of the high school, thank you. And uh, well, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. All right, now we're moving on. To, now it's student representatives time. And since we just finished with Danbury High School, why don't we start with Danbury High School? Would you introduce yourself and start? Hi, my name is Ami Baritz, and this is Marissa Lobo, and we are part of the Board of Governors Executive Council at Denver High School. In the past few weeks at DHS, we have had a deco breakfast last Friday, honoring their first 10 students of the quarter. There will be a breakfast this Thursday for our door decorating winners, and the theme this year was inspires you. And seeing the participation from all grades was very impressive this year. Today at 2 Seattle game in the state competition, so that's really impressive as well. Starting on Monday, the DECA organization at our school is hosting a canned food drive, and all proceeds will go to help fight children's. Lastly, the first quarter is coming to an end, and report cards will be passed out this Thursday to all grades during advisory periods. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone here for news? No one's here for me. Okay, moving forward, it's time. Wait, here's. Oh, that one here. Oh, hi. Hi. Okay. Um, so I do have a few um, notifications. I was speaking with the statewide student member of the um, Connecticut Board of Education, um, and he gave me some updates. Um, so the most recent um, statewide Board of Education meeting was very brief. Um, state adopted new set standards for science education. Um, a small wording connection was made to a past uh, vote. So again, very short news legislative agenda for this year. Um, and a number of budget cuts were also announced. Um, the most significant budget cut was a budget cut for CPEP, which is the Connecticut Pre-Engineering Program. They're cutting about $50,000 for that program. Um, something I wanted to hear about. Um, I'm actually a student. Statewide supervisor. Um, there will be some discussion at our next. Well, I do have to speak with you a little bit later um, about those high school graduation requirements and a committee meeting. Um, <laughs> Rob, Hillary, come on up. And Jessica, we used to teach I'm, I'm not, I can't, right? Um, <laughs> I can't. We're all into the Jack background, but I, I, every year, with the work that Doug uh, Porter does for us, for our students, many of you um, don't even know what summer is during the year. And uh, every time he gives me this report, I say, I've never been for the board. Can I say two things before that kind of had, well, uh, first thing is, is uh, I had Michael in sixth grade, <laughs> right, you know, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to see him down here because even in sixth grade, he was in the politics. Okay. So anyway, I'm happy to see you down there while I'm sitting here and I see that's a great thing. AIS, so. I'm the only spokesperson for AAS. Um, he's made a smooth transition to a AAS. I know one of the, the tough things about AAS is from you know different areas, and when you transfer, it's hard to get along with you know. Real quick, I want to talk about the Danbury High School. Is our program, and basically our program is divided up into three sets. We service all three. I guess I'll sit down. Um, that was a, a, a huge success. We have 21 students. Possibly. Next year. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to tell you, and then moving down, we have the Minority Bilingual Teaching Pipeline, um, which is a collaboration with the Danbury Board of Ed in Western Connecticut. What that does is it works with students that want to be teachers, and, um, you know, they just can talk a little bit more about that one. Yeah, so it's uh, students who want to go into the teaching profession. So what they do is they go and like they work with elsewhere elementary school right now. They go in the summer, they go and teach. It gets them a little bit about the teaching <coughs> profession, and then with some of them, it's like, oh, I don't want to teach probably because it's all senior year. You should be doing the side of teaching. Key thing, or is, since we're in education, the anticipatory set here, the fact that they all get college credit. Um, for taking this class, um, which then translates into three college credits, and you know they can go to Westcon or it could even transfer to one of the other state schools. The the last program I want to spend much time on, but that is a, a feeder program for our high school five week residential summer program at Western Connecticut. It's part of the created from working with you know elementary to the college group. Um, the, the program that we want to uh, focus on most here, though, is the high school group. And, you know, we've doubled the amount of high school students within the last two years. Um, we get the majority of our funding through the federal government and the state government. Um, the Board of Education has helped us as well. Um, what we're able to accomplish is monies is by the after-school tutoring program at Danbury High School. Um, with and provides that they have tutoring. Um, this is this has been hugely successful, and, and you know, it was a smaller model that we've grown into a larger model with all of Danbury High School. The the smaller model is um, can be seen in the the data that we've given you guys in the sheets and the retention and the graduation rates. Um, this has been the program that you know we've run with this program. And part of the reason why we get the money from the federal government is because part of our goal is to turn around persistently low achieving schools or school districts. And this has been one way that we've been able to help Danbury kind of, uh, you know, uh, help with the after school uh, programming. So some other things that, that we do, and, and I, wanna, I wanna bring in some of the students, and, and it's, it's kind of key that, that they're here because we actually have a senior, a graduate of the program, and a current student of the program. And they happen to be all uh, siblings. So I, I wanted to bring them here for, for a quick second for them to just talk to you a little bit about their experience in the program at each one of these levels. Okay, so my name is Yara Zocalado. I graduated from Danbury High School in back in 2010. Um, the program was very influential in my life. I'm the oldest daughter of immigrant parents. Um, who always enforce the importance of an education but never have the means. And the program were always there to guide me through the process and know what and you may also need a hand to help you. No matter what, it's always good to have someone to show you and have them lead you the correct way, correct way to do something. Because even though I've been through the process, they can learn from other people their own age. Also, how
a thing called uh, Wake and Rake. It's based out of Brookfield, um, but what they do is they um, help elderly people clean the leaves around their homes that can't get outside. It's a Brookfield activity, but we actually got a site in Danbury, which is nice because our students are from Danbury. Um, we do a lot with Ability Beyond Disability Homes. We bake cookies on, on hot and uh, the I'm thinking of uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, so, uh, what was the other one we do? Uh, we do like uh, community service in Morris Street, like in the middle of the hallway, and then just any activities that they have. So, we try to work with like the other schools, we try to work with the community partners, and then, you know, like they mentioned, a lot of different activities so that way all the students have the opportunity to do. But then, definitely, if you have a chance, check out our website. Friends of the library book sale. Um, Sal wants to know if you guys can come friends in a podcast in Westport. I just wanted to um, say that when I was a guidance counselor, this program just started ages ago, and it really uh, warms my heart to see how it has grown yep. tremendously. And, um, Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, so, yes. so, you know, one thing, and just to tell you guys, when I, when I started this job in 2002, um, we had 57 students. And now, you know, we're up to 132 in high school, two, you know, and, and it goes on and on, 90 in the middle school. And then, obviously, we're, we're getting a lot of the Danbury kids at, at the college. One of the things, actually, for this program at the college. Um, so uh, they're going to give me a wing. If you've been at the college, you've seen the map and board. Uh, we're we're going to get a room very similar to that. Um, so a lot of the workshops that we host for the parents, I mean, we're sponsors of college. We can host a lot of that stuff where I don't have to go reserve it with somebody. Also, even the parents, like, you know, once they see that their students, So it's really a great collaborative. It's a three sixty. Yep, so one of the the masterminds of the program, I think, right, or, or the, the real beauty of the program is the fact that in the middle school for the Excel program worked for us during the summer and during, adds that piece of continuity for the students. You know, they, they know the teacher for four years. You, you know, um, for example, Ms. Bergnolo, who some of you may know, happens to be a, a, a very good editing writer. She teaches English at the high school and she's able to like really help all the kids, whether they're freshmen or whether they're seniors or whether I'm working on a grant, I go to her. So she's multifaceted in that way. Um, also in the tutoring, what we've tried to do too, uh, um, we, we also are in the, in the program to come down and help with the after school tutoring program as well at the high school. So, you know, it, it really has been a, uh, feet, but but it's worked. And the things that I've recognized is if you're going to have an after-school program for kids, there has to be transportation home. I used to think you just had to have food. <laughs> it's not just food. You just have to have transportation. It helps. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, after-school programs were a norm. You know, no one went home. I mean, everybody went home later on. And, and when I saw that, you know, there was an after-school program going, but we just put it on steroids. You know. Minority Bilingual Teaching Pipeline. Um, the is, um, really help help them. You know, the needs of the students who are participating in this program are actually helping uh, bilingual and ESL classes at the Murray High School right now. So during their free period, they will go to one teacher and just like help her out and help the other students as well. So it's a good like you know as a peer. Like Sal alluded to, it's the continuity of the teachers, understanding the students, and, and really, you know, what you guys are creating with that freshman, you know, class is that, you know, the rapport is there year after year, and, and it's just a relationship, 
You know, I constantly talk to these guys about having a good rapport with your teacher, having a good rapport, having a good rapport. Um, that means everything when you go to college for sure, um, but also in high school. So, so before you go, yes, I, we didn't do this before. That's right. Joe, this, these are the kinds of activities that we were all proud of that Joe Voss was talking about when you, when you hear what our kids are doing. Will the teachers from high school stand up? Right. I meant to do that before, so we know you're here. I mean, we want to thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Students in the back, just so you know, we did the superintendent's report to let you know that, as uh, Chairman indicated, when the audience has something to say at that table, they do not respond. That doesn't mean that they wouldn't take it up and discuss it. So please don't miss that. So thank you very much for coming. Nice job. Thank you all. Thank you. Wow, that was a great presentation. Isn't it? It's phenomenal. Good night, Good night, Okay. That the Board of Education approve the use of building rental funds in accordance with 15 172. Second. Second by Bob Tabersack. Any comments? Martino. Amen. Oh, Bob, I'm just sorry. Just a comment. Uh, we just had a site in facilities meeting, and Bob. I'm very proud, I'm very proud that we've been able to use the rental fund for what it's supposed to be used for, okay? So money comes in and it's used for the facilities that are directly related to the activities that rental fund monies collect, okay? See that kind of program operating the way it should. It's actually been doing that for a while and, and it's, yeah, it's, exactly. it's very rewarding, okay. Thank you. Is that the only question or, or piece of conversation on this? Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No abstentions. Seeing none, it passes. Go, Ken. I believe we, we have just to remove the table. Yes. We have the table. motion to the table. So we can select. When we put the original contract on and the state contract again, has some edits. There, there are minor changes that have to comply with state and federal statutes. So, in a sense, I need a motion to table this item until we're back at the next meeting. I make a motion that we table the Sodexo agreement. Second. by Gladys. For this year at as Joe mentioned today, they will verify the numbers. But I'll give you an We have transportation.
I, I put the uh, goals in the, your uh, packet mm -hmm. just so that as rather than have one meeting where I sit down and bore you to death, I thought it would be a little better as we go through the year, we can update you on what we're doing. The first goal that we're all focusing on, and Joe mentioned before, um, he put the as assessment to the side, but we're all trying to focus and target on, on certain skills, and we're trying to align all of our goals with our goals. The teachers of the minds will try to align with our goals and then the building goals and the administrative areas. You all been there at workshop with Jonathan Costa. This is what it's all planning on in the classroom. But you're first. You want to talk a little bit about doing that and the alignment for some of the work that we're doing. and on heavily is the concept of diagnose then prescribe. So lifestyle diagnostic work that you have to do path is we do. We want to make sure we don't throw the baby out with the bath water. So the star assessment that you that um, Sal mentioned is something called reference test. It means it's been checked out nationally. Uh, in terms of something called things called reliability and validity, so it's not just something we made up, and we're not really sure if the results we get back are actually valid. They are very valid, um, but the, we're at the baseline level right now, and we just gave the first round grades one all the way up, and it's it tells us where we currently are, but doesn't tell us much more than that. Um, the board has heard both Sal and myself over years now talk about trend line data. And the idea of looking at where we were, are we moving forward, are we making steady progress? Um, there has never been in the history of the United States a straight trend line like this. It goes up, it dips a little bit, it goes up, it dips a little bit. Um, again, you heard Joe talk about um, the idea of making sure we put resources up against our most challenged kids, and those typically show up in the subgroups. Um, our TVAL plan subgroups recognized by the government as well as the subgroup that we come up with that may not be nationally recognized, but we see that these kids aren't doing it as well. So we've had our first round of this. Um, we're working on a project that comes out of Harvard University. If you hear the term data-wise, um, all this means is we create a culture to do deep levels of diagnostic work. Um, we base all of our decisions on evidence. So it's not just um, we think this, but rather here it's the evidence that's underpinning it. And then all of this ties in, as Sal just said, to the two coherence goals on the part of the board. Um, as you know, the district has been commended repeatedly outside of Danbury, um, up to and including the statewide leadership conference um, over the summer, um, because the fact that Danbury is trying to bring coherence to all the work that it does. So we picked, as a school system, the idea of, of 21st century problem solving or making an argument based on evidence, you can do that in a kindergarten class. You know, what's the, the, the most popular flavor of ice cream, vanilla or chocolate? And a bunch of kids say, well, we think it's chocolate because we like it. And so they do a little survey, raise your hands, and they count the numbers, and lo and behold, they find out that out of the 20 kids, 15 like vanilla. And suddenly they say, now we know we've solved this, this uh, question through an inquiry-based model. We've inquired, we've collected data, we now have evidence. You know, ice cream is more popular in the classroom. You take that and bring it all the way up to AP Calc. Um, so it, it expands to fit the volume that we have. The same thing with making an argument based on evidence. It's two ends of the same continuum. Um, so our argument is that vanilla ice cream is the best argument. Apologize for taking us down to kindergarten, but our argument is vanilla ice cream is the best. Um, show us the evidence. Show us that you've actually done the work. And we now know what kind of ice cream to get for our, our, our summer party or something. So it's, we had to solve a problem. We went through this argumentation process. We should, uh, brought forth the evidence. And we now can solve a problem of practice. At a very sophisticated level, this is what we're working on now as a school system. This will really take years to create the culture 
that's talked about in here, where we can look at any school, any classroom, any grade level, and feel the presence of this. But in order to do that, the final piece is really providing teachers with real-time data that's not too invasive. Um, you can take a 20-minute test as opposed to a two- or three-day assessment, and it really um, saves instructional time. We know that was a big, big priority on the part of the board. Um, you saw the work that the district did in terms of changing our whole professional development model, our grade level meeting model, and still not trying to get rid of the SRBI approach anytime we bring people together. So with all this said, it's very difficult, closing point, it's very difficult to talk about any one initiative. These are no longer separate, standalone pieces, but rather we use the image of a necklace where each, each initiative is a pearl that's strung together on the necklace. So when we put them all together, a diagnostic prescriptive model and instructional enhancement based around the concept of continuous improvement. So we're trying to collect data around that. Uh, as we go through, you'll hear more about that. So your other goal, if you look at that, was to ensure that our curriculum is uniform across grade levels. Mm -hmm. You know, we were working at the middle school with the exploration, and you'll see in the budget and exploration uh, budget in next year's staffing. Right now, we started last spring working this Fall, Dr. LeBlanc has been helping us, and uh, Christy as well, the API at the middle school, um, in creating exploration language at the uh, elementary school. You can infuse some of that in there. For the goal arena uh, that the board, um, but likewise, we'll That's the difference. We don't have to put all the kids through it when, when they're meeting the goal. There isn't any point. So we can pick, they're just moving on. That's what we want. Ian, community? Mm -hmm. Engagement. So initiatives um, that we've rolled out this year that many families don't trust. So once we start that positive communication, we know that it works in our school readiness programs, and the more that we can um, implement that in our other grades, it will be um, helpful. Okay? Um, we have piloted last year on parents, and we will be piloting that again, um, both in class and pilot the scholastic um, parent engagement for literacy for families, and so that we, that will be rolled out through the Learning Center and through Park Avenue. We're very excited about that. It gives parents the opportunity to sign on at a given time around 8 o'clock at night after their children have gone to bed, and when we piloted it last year, we saw lots of dads do it because they could be um, home from work at that point and took part in it. We did things such as uh, mindset change. We talked a lot about discipline. That is something that um, Karen Max from Harvard University has worked diligently. Open 
house night was things that parents had brought to our attention. Um, getting their children to eat good meals, developing an evening um, routine with their children, and getting them to bed and enough sleep on time. And so our open house that night dealt with those different um, three issues, and parents really felt that it helped them out to be able to then foster that growth that they want with their children, get themselves on time to work in the morning, and hopefully we now have that dialogue with parents more and more um, versus the way that we did before. Um, we will be offering Les Saras. We're supporting the Parent Leadership Training Institute um, as well um, for some other parent trainings that we are doing. Um, we have, part of my role is to work with the Danbury Promise for Children Partnership that's going through a very heavy duty strategic plan right now um, under some new leadership, still working in very close in partnership with the United Way and all of our community partners and we are re-energizing the Latino parent group as well as our community messengers and that is 10 Spanish speaking um, men and women in, and 10 English speaking men and women that are kind of the pulse are those new cultural brokers that get out into the community and share the good word, share what we're doing um, as a school district, sharing what we're doing um, for parent trainings, um, kindergarten registration, the parents need to know and we're finding that that really is working well um, with the parents. We have made um, some with um, PR um, out there. I am now writing a um, column each time in the tribunal languages and um, six or four weeks ago was that back to them or giving them their answers. So that's where we are with parent engagement. Um, the family Just so everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eileen was there and able to stop and So we're trying to communicate more with the community that doesn't speak English, specifically Spanish, and so we're trying. To, we're testing today a rough, very rough Spanish translation, so that we can put, the Spanish community can watch the board of ed going on, know how they can part. And so that's why you keep hearing me talk back here. <laughs> you thought you were talking to yourself. <laughs> well, that too. Thank you, Ann. Uh, fiscal responsibility, yeah, Joe. Open the door. Is the young man to open the door? I can get it. I have a book. Uh, uh, all our efforts relate to working with the city council and the mayor's office as far as really our budget development process. We're beginning a, a little earlier in the budget with the finance committee this year. Obviously, still looking at the three year process and through your budget. Obviously, all the our state funding came from outside groups, and um, those are the, in, the, in the broad sense I'm aware of some of the calls. Can't do it yourself, too. No. 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 The last thing we have there um, in front of you, the Delta program, mm -hmm. the ASPA program. So I put that in there. So that kind of covers the goals that um, living and, and, and really working with schools. So. Okay, that's a construction grant. Do you want to speak to it? We've talked, we've had a conversation on facilities of a $1.7 million small, I call it a small construction grant. The board is able to apply for $1.7 million in funding for minor improvements in our facilities, so lockers, uh, bathroom upgrades and replacements, uh, any playground work we'd like to do, sidewalks, um, and in a sense, any place in minor projects. We're currently evaluating some pieces right now. One or some bathroom upgrades in some of the schools, lockers at our middle schools, our playgrounds. We still have a few with some issues we need to deal with. Missions. So there are quite a few projects we're starting to kind of weed through. Working with the city pretty closely as far as getting things that are on their hit list that they haven't funded for years. Hopefully, get some of those things done. So it's, it'll be kind of more to come as we get later.
Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, where are we? That's it. The school funding. Instead of the Wednesday. What's what is it, those? I just it's my last one. Yes. But y'all come, come to the annual for the dinner part. All right. Come for the dinner, okay? Um. Oh, the the um, on the second. Um, if everybody just spruce up a little bit because the first thing we do at 5.45, I'm sorry, 5.30 is our pictures taken for the yearbook. Um, and then we go into our business meeting at 5.45. And um, and when it adjourns, we go downstairs to the cafe and have, and eat. All right? Got it? Lexi, make sure that you're there. Okay. I'm sorry, when is that? That is on the 2nd. It's our second. annual meeting. Uh, Yes. Okay. Um, I'll explain more about it in two weeks when I see you. What else? That's it. Just the sites and facilities. The people don't have it. Don't have it. This was held early evening. And there's uh, and, and um, actually Joe. Joe coming. Yeah. Good night. Good night. <coughs> Joe is going out and getting more. Yeah, we don't need more. Okay, over here. Stay over here we do. And Rose will need one. And of course, we already touched on. Um, many of the ideas that were brought up. So. Joe will thank it a later date. <laughs> we thank Joe every day. I'm sorry? We thank Joe every day. Every day. I just wrote it down. Okay. Um, then we have community relations. You all need to attend. I want to thank everybody. They have the agendas all lined up. So does anybody have any before we close the meeting? All in favor? Aye. Aye.